my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. Uh, this is match week 33. I know what you're all thinking. How can that be when you did match week 31? Somewhere, somehow, I have lost a week of the Premier League. But according to the fixtures and according to everything I've been reading, as I do each and every week, to get ready for the Premier League show, it is match week 33. I don't know what's happened. I think it's because the majority of the teams in the league, it's got 31 played and there's a few with 32 played. A week's got lost in there somewhere, but it is match week 33 and that is what we're going to be previewing today, my friends. But uh, before we do that, if you are new to the channel, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. It's appreciated by your boy and drop a like on this video if you are enjoying the series to this point. There are not many episodes of the series left now. The Premier League is in the home stretch. We have another fantastic weekend of football coming up and we've got a big, big game of the week to talk about. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Let's preview match week 33 of the Premier League. So here we go, my friends. Let's get crackalacking with this preview. And the only way we can start this is game of the week. It's the way we start each and every week at a Premier League preview show. And today's is bloody obvious. It's just smacking me in the face. It's so obvious. Uh, it is, of course, Manchester City versus Manchester United. And the payoff could not be bigger for Manchester City in the game. I do just want to say, before I get cracking with this, that in the the, um, the wrap-up show, I was banging on about how Manchester City could win the league at Old Trafford. I don't know why, when I was doing the wrap-up, I had it in my head that Man City were going to win in the wrap-up. But a um, United fan, I do believe it was, he did let me know that I'd got it wrong. And he, he was very, very much, you know, in the right. It's actually at the Etihad. Man City can win the league at home. It's still massive. They can still win the league against their biggest rivals. It's just not at Old Trafford. So I do apologise for getting that wrong in the wrap-up show. But, like I say, it's a massive, massive game, this one, uh, for Manchester City. And a big game for Manchester United. Because at the end of the day, Man United, should they win this fixture, they stop Manchester City winning the league for another week. But should Manchester City do it, not only will they win the Premier League against their biggest rivals, not only will they do it at home, but they will be the quickest team to do so. This will be the soonest a Premier League champion has ever been announced, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that just proves how good Manchester City have been this season. It's a derby weekend as well of sorts. You know, we've got a few, uh, you know, big games in the weekend. We've got a London derby, we've got the Merseyside derby, but the biggest derby and the one with the most at stake is, of course, the Manchester derby. Now, you know, I could sit here and ramble for bloody ages how I think, you know, the game's going to go, how it could play out, the number of different ways it could play out, what this means to the fans. But, you know, I'm not a Man United or a Man City fan, so I really don't know what it means to either set. But I am pretty sure Manchester United will not want Manchester City to win the league against them. You know, because it, it, let's just put it this way, if it was between West Ham and Spurs... For the league and Spurs, you know, won, won, won the league against us. It'd absolutely kill me. It'd be heart-wrenching. So I can only, you know, imagine how it must feel for the United fans. The one positive Manchester United can take going into this fixture, though, is on the last two occasions that they've gone to the Etihad, um, they have taken something from the game. Uh, I do believe it was a nil-nil draw uh, the last time they went there. And the time before that, Manchester United walked away with a one-nil win. Uh, Manchester City, for some reason, on the last couple of occasions, have found it quite difficult to score against Manchester United and found it quite difficult to get going. Uh, that That is something that can be said about this fixture in recent times as well. It's, it's not been one of those games that's really lit up the league. They've cancelled each other out to some point, concentrating more on taking something from it than losing the game. But I genuinely, genuinely think that this Manchester City team are going to be massively up for this one, knowing that they can win the league. All that hard work you know, that's taken place in the 32 weeks before this one, it all comes down to this. And they are probably, in my opinion, going to play the game of their lives. They have done things that, you know, majority of the teams in the Premier League haven't done. They've done things that I think a lot of us fans didn't expect them to do this season. Pep Guardiola has put an absolute world beater of a team together there. They have played some fantastic football all season long. They have been the most consistent team in the league. They've had their moments where, you know, they have crumbled ever so slightly, but... But 
They've even won ugly. And that is what you've got to do if you want to win the Premier League. And the one thing they've done, and the most impressive thing, in my opinion, that they've done, is they've beat the teams in and around them. They've played very well against the top six, seven, eight teams. They've taken points off of them. It took a fantastic Liverpool performance for them to lose a game. And I mean Liverpool had to perform at the top of their game to beat them in that fixture. And Manchester City just had an off game. They've only lost one game all season. I think that just shows you how worthy of the Premier League they are this year. And to go and win it against their biggest rivals this coming weekend would be fantastic. And I'm sure that every Manchester City fan agrees with me. Man United are not going to be the easiest team to beat, though. Like I say, they have good form at the Etihad over recent times. Jose has got them, you know, playing some decent football again. They've got wins in their last two games. They're putting together a little run of form themselves. They want to win, uh, sorry, they want to, by bare minimum, finish second in the league. And, you know, if they go and get a win in this game, then their Premier League dreams are still alive. Probably on hold just for another week because Manchester City will probably go and win it the following week but they've still got a chance and while you've still got a chance you've still got to put in 110% and I don't think we can expect any less from a Jose Mourinho team. Whatever happens, it's going to be a fascinating game to sit and watch. I think it's going to be a fantastic game as a result of what's at stake in this one. And should Manchester City manage to beat Manchester United and win the league this coming weekend, they will have thoroughly deserved it in my humblest of opinions, um, but it is going to be an interesting one, and I can't wait for it to happen. I should have added that this is the 5.30 kickoff. It's on Sky Sports on Saturday evening, my friends. Do not miss it. Do not miss out, because like I say, Man City could be lifting the trophy at the end of it. But uh, as far as the score prediction for the game is concerned, it's a really, really difficult one uh, to predict. But I'm all for go in with the dream scenario. And I think the dream scenario for any Manchester City fan is they go out there, they whitewash Manchester United, they lift that Premier League title at the end of it, and that is what, exactly what I am going to go with. Uh, I don't think it's going to be quite the landslide victory that most would dream of. I think it's going to be a pretty close one. But I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Manchester City, and our Premier League champions will be crowned. Okay then my friends, well we have got nine other Premier League games to run through and like I say it's a big derby weekend. Uh, not only do we have the Manchester uh, Manchester derby but we do also have a London derby and the Merseyside derby and well the Merseyside derby is where we are going to start next my friends because it is the early kickoff, 12.30 on Sky Sports, Everton versus Liverpool, and they don't get much bigger than this up there, do they? But, um, you know, I can't personally look past Liverpool in the fixture. I think Everton have been very, very stop-start since they got rid of Koeman. I think that Sam Allardyce has come in and settled the ship. I think most would expect him to do that. That's usually what he does. He will guarantee you Premier League survival, and he has done that once again with this Everton team. I think he'll probably get replaced in the summer. I don't really think that the board or the fans have taken to him. Uh, he was a stopgap, but a positive one. He's kept him in the league. But um, this Liverpool team in recent weeks has been playing some scintillating football. Jurgen Klopp has got them playing some majestic stuff. And I personally think, other than Man City, Liverpool are the, are the second best team in the league. I really, really do. Especially going forward. And I would argue at times that Liverpool are even more attractive than Manchester City going forward. They do it at such pace and uh, they do it so they go from back to front so quickly that you can't help but admire uh, the fashion that they play their football. They do come unstuck a little bit at times. They do struggle in defence but you know they came back last time out against Crystal Palace. 1-0 down fought back to 2-1 and it's that fight that is the reason why I can't really look past Liverpool in the game. Everton have got a nasty habit of conceding early goals and and then once they concede one, their heads go down and it completely implodes on them. And that happened last weekend against Manchester City. It was three early goals and it and it and that was it. The game was done. The game was over at half-time as far as I'm concerned last weekend. And they can't afford that to happen again. But should Liverpool get that early goal, you can't look past them. And I think that Everton will just completely disintegrate in the fixture. This is massive, OK? Everton fans would love to take a, a, a win against their, their nearest rivals and vice versa for Liverpool as well and I think Everton fans the one thing they want is some passion they want a bit of drive they want a bit of something about the game I think this is the sort of game where you have to involve Wayne Rooney I know that he is by no means in the peaks of his powers anymore he, he's been on the time for a number of years in my opinion but 
you get his passion in this game. He knows what it's all about. He's done it for Manchester United, another big rival of Liverpool's, but I reckon it, it would be very, very sweet for him to do it for his boyhood club against Liverpool. Like I say, though, I can't look past the ball in this game. I just think they're playing too good. You know, the stuff they're playing is just too good. And uh, it's just Sam Allardyce, for me, cannot get things going at Everton. And like I say, once they can see one, it all goes to pot. Uh, score prediction for the game like I'm going to lean towards Liverpool it's going to be you know both teams are going to score in my opinion I'm going to go with another 2-1 and Liverpool will be pressing for that second place position in the Premier League um, we now move on to the next game in the uh, on the Saturday and that is Bournemouth versus Crystal Palace this is a massive massive game for Crystal Palace um, they lost last weekend they are very close to the relegation places Obviously, Southampton and Stoke can still stay up. I think that results kind of went in favour of everybody down there last weekend. The majority of the teams fighting relegation lost, so it kept them all very, very close. Uh, it, I didn't realise what a big result it was for teams like West Ham to come away with a victory last week um, because it is so, so close. And Crystal Palace are one of those that have to be considered favourites uh, to be battling this relegation dogfight until the very last weeks of the season. They come up against this Bournemouth team team that just do not know when to quit they don't know when to say no they don't know when to roll over and know when they're defeated but that's an Eddie Howe team and that is the team that he has put together and they have done a very well this season to get themselves in a position that they are because uh, in the early parts of the season they too were one of those teams struggling against relegation now if they went on a really poor run of form unbelievably they can still be dragged in should some of the other teams win so big result this is a big big one for Bournemouth if you win this game Game, you're guaranteeing and I honestly honestly think you're guaranteeing safety I still don't think sort of like ninth um, ninth, 10th and 11th are still in there I still genuinely think if they lost every game until the end of the season you'd get dragged in because teams are going to take points off each other that's just the way the cookie's crumbling at the moment down there but I don't know how to call this one and um, I am going to go with a draw I think that you know at on their day, both these teams can play some good stuff. Obviously, Crystal Palace lean quite heavily on players like Wilfred Zaha. He's going to need to have a very good game. Bournemouth, like I say, they don't know when they're beat, and especially at home. They've been playing some very good stuff at home as well. To draw that game last, uh, last time out was unbelievable. Um, and I think that they're going to be at it again this weekend. Crystal Palace need to find goals from their strikers. If they don't do that... They could very well be down, especially with the running that some of the other teams have got down there. I think that the only thing that kind of saves uh, Crystal Palace bacon this weekend is that Southampton and Stoke have very, very hard games to play. But as far as the game is concerned, like I say, can't separate them. I think it's going to be very, very close. And I think Bournemouth have pretty much become the draw specialist this season. And I'm going to go with a score draw. I'm going to go with a 1-1. The next game we have to talk about is Brighton and Hove Albion versus Huddersfield and this one is a big six pointer and if we didn't have all the derbies that we've got this weekend I genuinely would have considered this one of the big games and a potential for game of the week because if we're being completely honest the Premier League title race has been over for a number of weeks it's probably been over for, you know since as soon as Christmas my friends we all kind of knew that Manchester City were going to you know have this Premier League nailed on after the loss to Liverpool they just went from strength to strength didn't they and pushed on and that's why they're in the position they are so I really have in recent weeks and I'm sure you'd all agree I've been concentrating more on the relegation places it seems to be a little more exciting down there and we still don't know and can't determine the three teams that are going to be in the championship next season and Brighton and Huddersfield are two of the clubs that are you know you know in the running to go down both get on good runs then they go and lose a few games and so they never really pull away from the relegation places I think Brighton have been in better form than Huddersfield um, and I think that both have been guilty that their away form has kind of shot them both in the foot Brighton have to make the most of their home form they've been very good in front of their own fans all season long I think that for me out of the two clubs Brighton have probably acclimatised to the Premier League a little bit better you know Huddersfield's early season 
season form was very, very good, but they have tailed off massively, and that is why they find themselves in the position they do. Um, I personally think that Brighton are going to come away with the three points in this one. Um, they've been very good in front of their own fans. So I think that counts for a lot. They really are the 12th man. Um, and I just think that Chris Hurton has been a lot more consistent than David Wagner at Huddersfield this season. He's found a setup. He's found the players that he likes. They've been his go-to players all season long, and they've done fantastic for, uh, things all season long. Huddersfield have a good team, but I think that with them, um, it's the inconsistencies of the manager, his tactics. He goes for it a little bit too much sometimes, and it, and it really does uh, drive the you know now in the coffin each and every time. Just when they think they're getting away from it, they get dragged back in because of mistakes that are made not only by the manager but the players. I am leaning towards Brighton in the game. I, I feel like going for a draw, but I am actually leaning towards Brighton, and I think this could really drag Huddersfield in massively to the relegation dogfight, especially if say Stoke or Southampton were to take a shot result from the games that they're going to be playing this weekend but score prediction for the game I can't go um, anywhere other than Brian I'm going to go with a very narrow 1-0 victory to them uh, we've got Leicester versus Newcastle next Leicester obviously I think they pretty much guaranteed their safety a very long time ago I think Newcastle in recent weeks have all but guaranteed theirs I do believe they've got three wins from their last three games Newcastle which is very good stuff for a team that's been struggling to score goals and struggling to get runs together they've done some fantastic stuff in recent weeks and they've been playing some really good stuff as well last weekend they could have scored more than the one goal that they did they really did create some quality chances and it's all come hand in hand with some good January signings that have come into the team and have been doing a really good job and I think that Rafa Benitez deserves some credit for the run that the team have gone on for their improved defence and uh, you know putting these points together I think Newcastle are going to be a Premier League team again next year a lot would have been questioning that early this season they didn't have the best window in the summer January was pretty quiet, but the players they have brought in have done a really good job. So that's fantastic stuff for them. Leicester have improved massively since the new manager come in, you know, in the early parts of the season. Claude Puel has done a very, very good job for them. He pretty much, you know, um, guaranteed their Premier League football uh, a few weeks back. They've been flying pretty okay. They've been doing. They've been in the top half of the table for the majority of the season, and uh, they're, they're a good team on their day. Coupled with you know some improved form from Jamie Vardy and you know Mares getting his head down and getting back to basics. It's no surprise that their form has improved in the manner that it has. Although Newcastle have been on a good run, I am going to lean towards Leicester as far as the result is concerned. I think they're really good in front of their own fans. I think there's going to be plenty of goals from both teams, though. But I think that Leicester City, for me, just edge it. And I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to the Foxes. Uh, we've got Stoke versus Tottenham Hotspur next, my friends. Uh, Stoke, obviously, a big relegation favourite now. Um... They've got a very hard run in coming up in uh, the, the next few weeks, along with their other relegation rival in Southampton. Both are playing big teams this weekend, but Stoke obviously coming up against Tottenham, who last week put on a real scintillating display against Chelsea. Uh, a really, really good result for them, it has to be said. 28 years they hadn't won at Stamford Bridge for, um, but they go there to Stamford Bridge, win the game, do fantastic things, and they pull out a massive gap between them and Chelsea. And and even without Harry Kane, who has come back from his ankle injury uh, or knee injury, whatever it was, a little earlier than was expected, they've still managed to score goals. They've still managed to do a very professional job without him and you know continued this very good run of form that they've been on in recent weeks. For me, nailed on for Champions League football are Tottenham and they are going to push Stoke all the way. Stoke have got to get their best players more involved in the game. They were in the game all the way up until Arsenal got that penalty last week. They really were. They played some really really good stuff but they need to start putting the ball in the back of the net and they need someone to start doing it other than um, Shakiri. he has been their standout player should they get relegated he will be the first one out the door in my opinion I would love a club like mine to go and pick him up I really do rate him I think he's a very special talent and it's amazing how he's had one of his best seasons in the Premier League this year and yet they're in the relegation places it's, it's weird how you can couple these things but he has had a very good season and they're going to have to, you know, very, very, you know, lean very heavily on him if they're going to take anything from this game. I don't see it happening, though. I think it's going to be really, really bad um, for 
for Stoke. But I just think the teams around them are going to lose as well. And that is the only thing that's going to save their grace ever, uh, ever so slightly this weekend. I'm leaning towards Spurs, as most would think I am, on a good run of form. And Harry Kane is pretty much back. Uh, fit 100% as well and that is going to cause trouble to plenty of defences in the league and I'm going to go with a 2-0 win to Tottenham in the fixture uh, we've got Watford versus Burnley up next um both teams have been in okay form. Watford's away for under their new manager uh, hasn't been too good. But good, a good home form, it has to be said. Haven't lost at home under the new boss yet. Burnley, their season keeps going from strength to strength. They went on a real horrible run of form not too long ago. But since then, haven't lost a game. And uh, it just shows you, doesn't it, how you can get confidence back in the team. A great result last time out. A good 2-1 win for them. And I have them now done now to finish 7th in the league. And I don't think anybody would have expected that. They're going to have to do real big things in the summer for me. They're going to have to strengthen this team in the summer massively if they're going to repeat this again next year. But Sean Dyche, I'm sure, has uh, targets in mind and I think he knows the sort of player that he wants to bring in. I said it in my wrap-up. There's a, they're a team of you know 11 players and there's no superstars in there, but they all know their role and they all work for the manager and work for the fans and that is why they've had such a fantastic season. Uh, I can't separate the two teams in this one. Like I say, in recent weeks, they've both been all right. I think Watford do need to tighten up at the back means um, conceding far too many goals last weekend is a prime example of that conceding two against Bournemouth at home I think this one's going to be a draw but I think both teams would be pretty happy with that points on the board at this point of the season just keeps you safe I think Burnley obviously they've been safe for a long time Watford need maybe a few more points they can't afford to go on a, a you know a run of form where they lose too many games now but I'm going to go with a 1-1 in the fixture and I think it'll be a welcome point for both teams. We've got West Bromwich Albion versus Swansea next and I think West Bromwich Albion for me are all, uh, are already relegated. Um Alan Pardew left the club by mutual consent, um, you know, this week just gone. Uh, so they are going to be going into the game without a manager. Um, Swansea, obviously, under Carver Howe have been, you know, far improved. And they're going to have to, you know, kind of use this one to get three points. They're just going to have to go for it. I think if you put enough pressure on this West Bromwich Albion team, you will win the game. Uh, I don't know when West Brom can mathematically um, stay up, be like, relegated. I haven't looked. I know they're on 20 points, aren't they? Which is, at this point um, close to being a Premier League low isn't it I think like Derby obviously owned that record I think I can't remember how many points it was but I don't even think they made 20 points but it is going to be a pretty shocking tally for West Brom whatever happens at the end of the day uh, it's all gone peaked on there it's been coming for a, a few seasons in my opinion and the minute they let Pulis go they knew that they were never going to avoid these problems and I'm not surprised they're in the position that they are Swansea have you know it all to do still in the game West Brom in not going to make it easy but I think Carver Howell is going to keep them up I think between now and the end of the season with the games they're going to play there's enough games that they can pick up points the other what that cannot be said for West Brom though I think they are they're relegated already but with each passing week it's just going to get worse and worse score prediction for the game I think Swansea are going to take the away points they're going to take the all three points as well I'm going to go with a 1-0 victory to Swansea we now move on to the Sunday games. My friends, we've only got two more to talk about. The first one is a quarter past two kickoff on Sky Sports, and it does involve Arsenal versus Southampton. Um, last weekend, Southampton did not turn up. They were probably the worst team to play football in the Premier League last week. Um, that first half display against West Ham was uh, nothing short of unreal. Like, unreal. And when I say unreal, I don't mean good. I mean unbelievably bad. It was awful they sh four shots all game not one of them was on target they could not have made it easier for West Ham I was obviously at the game as well and I, I genuinely couldn't believe how bad they were and they cannot afford to be that bad again this weekend against Arsenal Arsenal's form has improved uh, they went through a bit of a barren run didn't they a bit of a Per, a, a horrible patch in the league where um, they just could not stick wins together. Fans were on their back, but to their you know testament to them, you know uh, they've been putting a little run together, been beating the teams they need to be beating. Um, I think they're going to finish sixth personally for me, unless Chelsea really disintegrate in the next few weeks. I do see Arsenal finishing where they are at the moment. Uh, that's not going to be the best for them. Will Arsenal then leave at the end of the season? That is something we'll have to wait and see, my friends. But um, yeah, it's been good recently they weren't at it last weekend against uh, Stoke though uh, the penalty helped 
after they scored that penalty, they they kind of went into another gear. But they're going to need to you know start a bit quicker and start a bit better than that. It's another relegation rival that they're coming up against. At the end of the day, Arsenal don't really have anything to play for this season in the league other than trying to finish as high as possible. League title's gone. Can't really finish in the Champions League places. So it's all about just putting points on the board. But for Southampton, survival is the biggest thing. And sometimes these can, these can be the harder games to beat because it's all there for the other team to do. You know, survival is the most important thing. And I think that it's not going to be the easiest game. As Southampton, though, are going to have to be a lot better than they were last weekend. If they turn up the way they did against West Ham, it could get silly. I think Arsenal honestly could register not a very high number of goals in the game. Should they turn up and buy a bit of a display, though, then there's nothing to say they can't take something from it. After what I see last week, though, I can't help but lean towards Arsenal. My score prediction for the game is a 3-0 hammering by Arsenal, and uh, it could be all doom and gloom for Stoke. And the last game we have to talk about, my friends, is, of course, a little London derby involving Chelsea and West Ham. It's on Sky Sports. It's a half past four kickoff, and I actually think this one is going to be a really, really good game of football. Um, Chelsea, their form of late hasn't been great. Um, it's been very stop-start their season. It's been very up and down. I did question in the wrap-up how last season they can win the Premier League so convincingly and then come into this one and do so poorly. Um, I don't even think they're going to get a Champions League place this year because of their inconsistencies. And again, they're coming up against a team in similar fashion to what I was saying about Arsenal. They're coming up against a team who have it all to do. West Ham's win last weekend was big. It means that they're five points clear of the relegation places. But I still think they need at least three or four more points to stay up this season. And um, this could be a big game for West Ham. And Chelsea are going to have to be at their best. With Chelsea's form and the way it is, if West Ham turn up and they press and they play the game the same way they did last Last weekend there is nothing to say that West Ham can't take something from the game and I'm not just talking about a point I'm talking about all three I don't believe West Ham will do that on the road I think that West Ham are just far too conservative for their own good I think Moyes's form is very inconsistent as well it sort of he gets points every fourth game he, he goes on these weird runs where he'll go and do something fantastic like he did last weekend. He'll get a 3-0 victory against the Southampton. Then the next three games, he'll get a draw and a couple of losses. It's really, really odd. There's no consistency in it. For me, my opinion, I think David Moyes should just stick out the same team he did last week. Obviously, minus uh, Antonio, who's done for the rest of the season. But throw Fernandez in from the start. I thought he had a very good game last week after he'd come on. Go with the same 11. Press the game in the same way you did the first 20, 30 minutes. And just get at Chelsea. There is nothing to say you can't take anything from them at this moment in time because they are not at their best. They're not playing the best football. That will avert them last weekend as well to lose to Spurs in the fashion that they did. They know that their Champions League dreams have probably been done uh, done and dusted now, are over as a result of that loss. So it, again, it's just about picking up points, trying to make the most of the rest of the season for them. It's, it's all but over Chelsea's season. So this is a bigger game for West Ham than it is Chelsea. You've got to make the most of that. Um, as far as the score prediction is concerned, I am actually going to go with a draw. And it's not, I'm not going to base it off of one game, one good game that West Ham have had. I'm basing it on the fact that Chelsea, therefore, hasn't been very good. Uh, and I'm going to go with a 1 1 in the fixture, and it'll be a hard earned point for West Ham. So there you have it, my friends. That's the end of another episode of the Premier League show. It's been a longer one today um, but there was plenty to get through wasn't there we've got a few big rival games we've obviously got the massive game with the two Manchester clubs where City can seal the league so I wanted to get it all in there my friends uh, before we leave today uh, right at the time of recording this uh, Ray Wilkins has passed away today a real footballing gent he will be a big miss in the football community uh, commiserations uh, to his uh, family I hope they're all well uh, it is a sad day for football to lose uh, a, a huge footballing icon in the you know English game at the end of the day uh, and, it, and I always enjoyed listening to him as a pundit he was a very good coach I had the pleasure of meeting him I have a photo of his autograph somewhere um, he, he really was a lovely man and uh, it, it was very very sad to hear that he'd passed away today but uh, that is it my friends I will be back with the wrap up next week probably on Monday uh, for this if you are new remember to like share and subscribe my friends uh, but that is it until next time I've been Dan You've been legends, and this has been the Premier League show. Peace out, my homies. See you on the next one. Can't wait. City could be champions.